All right, so in this video, I'm going to find the point of intersection between a function and the inverse of the same function itself. And I'm also going to sketch them all out. And I have five examples in this question. And the last example is going to be an exception question. So if you find the first one and the second one a bit similar and you want to skip ahead, go and skip ahead to the last one after that, it's going to be a bit different, but I would suggest going through all five examples. So let's start with the first example over here. I want to find the inverse of this function. So I'm going to flip my X and my Y. So I have X equals to five Y minus two. Then I want to isolate the Y. So X plus two equals five Y. Oops, and this pen is running out of paint. I'm going to grab a different one. X plus two equals five y and then i'm going to divide the five on the other side x plus two over five equals to y is now isolated so i can write it as f inverse of x so this is the inverse equation and i'm going to split this denominator over here to just make this a bit easier to understand because i'm going to sketch out this graph right now and if you want to sketch it it's easier to split this over here so I have the original function there. I have the inverse function over here. Let's do a sketch of this situation. For my original function, my y-intercept is negative two and my slope is positive five. So y-intercept here of negative two and a positive five slope means I have quite a steep slope over here in the positive direction. That's the original function f of x. Now I want to sketch this out here, and this is why I split the denominator. I can tell that my y-intercept is 2 over 5. And my slope is positive 1 over 5, which is positive, but very flat. So that's a sketch of the inverse function. I can tell that these two functions intersect at a point over here. And I want to find the x and y value of this point. So let's start by finding the x value. In order to find the x value of the point, you need to take the original function and make it equal to the inverse function. So make the original equal to the inverse. Now we want to solve this. I'm going to start by moving this x over 5 to this side. And I'm going to move the negative 2 to the right side as well. But I guess I 5x minus 2 minus x over 5 equals 2 over 5. And I'll move the minus 2 to the other side. So you could do that in one step. And that's how I'll do future questions. But I want to explain this a bit more clearly. So the negative two becomes a plus two. Now I just need to combine like terms. I'll do this in my calculator. Five minus one over five is 24 over five X. Two over five plus two is 12 over five. And then I want to solve this. I have the same denominator so I can cancel them. I just have 24x equals to 12. And if I divide by 24 on both sides, I'll just get x equals 1 over 2. So the x value of this intersection point is 1 over 2. To find the y value, I just have to sub in 1 over 2 I get into the original function. So f of 1 over 2 is 5 times 1 over 2 minus 2. Again, I'll do this in my calculator, and I just get 1 over 2 as well, just by coincidence. So this intersection point here between these two fun functions, the original and its inverse, is 1 over 2 and 1 over 2. 
All right, so let's go to the next couple of examples. I'll solve these ones a bit quicker now that you know the steps. So let's start by finding the inverse. I'll switch my X and my Y. And I'll isolate my Y. I'll cross multiply this two over in the next step. So two X minus six equals to negative X. And then I'll get rid of the negative by dividing everything by negative one. So this just becomes negative two X plus six equals. Oops, I don't know why I wrote an X here. This is a Y. And then I write as F inverse of X once it's isolated. I'll do my sketch next. So my first equation is negative one over two X plus three. Y intercept is three. Slope is negative half, so negative slope, but not too steep. So it looks something like that. Inverse equation has a y intercept of six. So slightly on top over here. And it has a slope of negative two, so negative slope, but a bit steeper. Just like that. That's g of x, that's g inverse of x, that y intercept is six. Now I need to find this point of intersection. I'm going to equate the original and the inverse with each other. Negative one over two x plus three equals negative two x plus six. I'll move this to this side and the three to the other side. So negative one over two x plus two x equals six minus three. That's just 1.5x or 3 over 2x, doesn't matter which way you write it. Now I'll divide by 1.5 on both sides, so I'll get x equals 2. So the x value of this point of intersection is 2. To find the y value, I can sub it back into the original equation. So g of 2 equals negative 1 over 2 times 2 plus 3, which is just positive 2 again. And we get the intersection point of 2, 2. It looks like x and y are the same in both cases. I wonder if that's true for all cases. It might actually be possible. Let's actually do all the examples and see if that actually works or not. Third one here, I want to find the inverse. So I'm going to flip my x and my y. I'm going to move the minus 1 to the other side. It becomes plus 1. And then I'm going to divide by 2. I get this. Now I want to sketch them both out. Also, this is, sorry, h inverse of x, and over here it should have been g inverse of x. I labeled them wrong. It is g and then h over here. So if I do the graph, the slope is, the y intercept is negative 1 and slope is positive 2. It looks something like that. That's h of x, and then the inverse, again, you can split this into x over 2 plus 1 over 2 to make it easier to sketch. So the y-intercept is 1 over 2, and the slope is also 1 over 2, which means it's more flat. It looks something like this. That's h inverse of x. Point of intersection is over here. I'll equate the original and the inverse to find the point of x value of the point of intersection. So 2x minus 1 equals x over 2 plus 1 over 2. I use the simplified one. I'll do the double movement here. So 2x minus x over 2 equals to 1 over 2 plus 1. And this is just Again, 1.5 or 3 over 2x, whichever way you want to write it. I'll just write it as 1.5 because it's exact. 1 over 2 plus 1 is also 1.5. Again, you could have used fractions of that. Which means x equals to 1 over here. And I'll summon this into the original equation. So h of 1 equals to 2 times 1 minus 1, which is just 2 minus 1, which is also 1. So it looks like every time we do this question, the point of intersection x and y value are going to be the same. And I didn't know that was true, but I guess that's true for all inverse functions. If you 
uh, have a function and you try to find the point of intersection with its inverse for linear functions at least, x and y value will be the same. So even I learned something new this video, which is pretty cool. Last two examples, I'll do them pretty quick. Let's find the inverse over here. So x equals six minus y, x minus six equals minus y. I'll divide everything by negative one. So negative x plus six equals f inverse of x. Plot these on my graph. So six minus x, I have a y-intercept of six and a slope of negative one. So it looks something like that. And negative x plus six is a y-intercept of six and a slope of negative one, which is directly on top of this as well. So both lines, this is both f of x and f inverse of x. If both lines are, top, are, are directly on top of each other, it means there's infinite points of intersection. It basically means the two lines are directly on top of each other, which means there's points of intersection basically everywhere. You can't list them all out. This one was an exception too, but I know this last one is also going to be an exception. I have q of x equals to two. Okay, now there's no, there's no x term over here. So when I flip x and y, the inverse is just going to be x equals to two and that's it. This over here is a horizontal line and the inverse is a vertical line. So I'll do the sketch of this to explain what's going on. Q of X equals to two, that's just Y equals to two. It's just a horizontal line like this. And the Y intercept, I guess you can say is two. X equals to two is just a vertical line like this. So this is, the original function q of x and this is the inverse function q inverse of x and this is the point of intersection we don't need any calculations it's just going to be two comma two a couple of exceptions here at the end but as you can see still kind of follows the same steps